What's up, Droners? Brennan Edwards here from Droner Tech, brought to you by Remote Pilot 101. And we are today gonna talk about Droner News, because you know we do this every month, so let's get into it. Up first, uh, more petty. You guys know I love the petty, and it continues. It's just like a petty like snowball rolling down a hill. So the Department of Defense, as you guys may recall, pretty much told DJI to kick rocks. You guys can watch some previous episodes of the news for that. Um, even after DJI gave 110% effort to make them happy and give them drones that are gonna work for what they wanna do, they told them to kick rocks. So now American companies are scrambling to pick up the pieces and say, oh, you know, sorry, you can just buy our drones. And so now the Department of Defense has worked with five different companies to be able to develop the drones that are gonna work for their needs. And now the names of those companies have been released that the government is saying, these are the drones that you guys can use for government contracts and government things within our whatever, our ecosystem of government stuff. And it's this, number one is the Skydio X2D, number two is the Parrot Nafi USA, then we have the Altavians M440 Ion, um, the Teal Dreams Eagle, uh, Golden Eagle, and the Vantage Robotics Vesper. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm not fully like familiarized with all of these drones because like, what is a Vantage Robotics Vesper? I'm not too sure, but I do know a few, uh, we actually have talked a little bit about a few of them, like the Skydio X2 and the Peridonafi. Those are ones that I've been talking about a lot, simply because of the lot, amount of pettiness as well as the advertising that they've been doing, strictly focused on China, which is not so subtly DJI. And they're going hard at them with those advertisements. Like, this is an American drone, you know? It's like, wait, aren't you guys are based out of France, you know? But either way, um, they're putting that out. And the interesting thing is that these are the secondary versions. Like, for example, the Nafi um, has a $700 drone. Parrot has a $700 drone that's pretty much the Anafi on the shelves that you can buy. Like, that's just the consumer drone. And they're charging the government $16,000 for their slightly altered version of that drone. And, I mean, I get it. Like, it's because the government got money and you're guaranteeing X, Y, and Z. But I don't... I don't see it being that big of a difference where it's literally a fraction of the cost to get the consumer version versus the government side of it, but who am I? Or even like the Skydio. You know, the Skydio X2D estimates to be between ten dollars and $20,000. Well, you can get the Skydio 2, which I actually have, thanks to Kelly at Ready, Set, Drone right now, uh, for $1,000. That includes everything you need for it. Honestly, you can you can make an argument. I feel like I've already made the argument of how they're price gouging and how it's really interesting that that's what's gonna be happening now is that we have American companies just making these drones that aren't even all that special for a lot of money for the U.S. government simply because they're American-made drones. But on the other side of that, you can look at it and say, well, these companies are struggling because DJI will crush them with the, with the type of drones they can make and the development that they can do and just the prices they can get make stuff for. DJI is going to crush them if it wasn't for the U.S. government stepping in and making it so that these U.S. companies do have a chance to compete and can actually sell drones to the uh, you know to the government and hopefully th that funding becomes their development funding so now they can make drones that are better uh, at competing against DJI drones. That's my own optimistic like wormhole that I fall into. So I wish every one of those companies the best of luck. Please take the money and make drones that can compete better with DJI. Up next, I really like this because I like art. There is a guy, an artist, a French artist by the name of Jay Ben who is out here making pretty artwork. And he's doing it like, you know, normally when you see somebody on the beach making artwork, you're thinking like, oh man, like it's a castle or it's a cute little drawing. Like, no, he's actually only making artwork that is visible from, well, a drone. That's what we're here to talk about, right? And these are really cool, to be fully honest. Like he puts these intricate designs together and he only does it for pretty much the one video and photo that he takes. And then that's it. The ocean reclaims what it once had. But for me, I love this because it is absolutely beautiful and I love unique use of drones, specifically when it comes to art, considering I am a drone cinematographer, which is a form of artist. Me appreciating somebody doing something artistic with a drone at any given point, I'm always going to do it if it's good art. If it's bad art, I'll say that. But this guy's lit. I love, I love the art he's doing. You guys should check out more of his work and the link will be below. All right, so up next, I'm gonna shout out, first of all, shout out the producer, uh, his name is Rob Fonda, who helps us put together these Droner News stories and a lot of producing for um, we, what we do on this. Um, I hope he doesn't actually, he edits these as well, I hope he doesn't cut this part out. But yeah, he came at my home state with this one. Uh, I am from Michigan and he thought it would be funny to add a Droner News article into what we're doing today as a eagle, like the sign of, a, the signal of what America is you know, destroying a drone in Michigan for the, uh, for the environment, like the Michigan's uh, Environment Great Lakes and Energy Department, because you know, Michigan is the state of the Great Lakes, 
And yeah, man, whatever, Rob. I'm not gonna make this story sound good. Either way, an eagle took down a drone for their, their, their they were doing some nature conservative story stuff and they were flying over a lake and an eagle attacked the drone and took it out, okay? That's what happened. Now they're trying to figure out why that happened. We all know that sometimes birds attack drones. I've never had birds attack my drones and physically touch them. I've had them circle them. I've had them threaten them, but I've never actually had a drone go down because of a bird. But I've also never had a bald eagle attacking my drones. So either way, this happened. The drone went down, they recovered it. Now they're thinking about different ways of putting skins and stuff on the drone to maybe make it so it doesn't look like a seagull or something. I think it's just probably the noise of the drone and they were probably close to like a nest or something. Who knows? So either way, drone versus eagle. Eagle wins, of course. It's an eagle, talons, and giant bird. But either way, this doesn't reflect on Michigan at all, Rob. All right, so I live in LA and as you guys know or may not know, the news is pretty much saying that the entire state of California is on fire, which is more or less true. There are a lot of fires going on. And one of the ways that fires are actually prevented is by actually starting fires, which seems counterintuitive, but what you're actually doing is creating like areas of fire burn, like high area burns that uh, you take away the fuel in a specific area that makes it so if a fire does start on either side of this, it would stop at this line. And that's a particularly dangerous thing to do it sometimes. A lot of times they'd, they, they would set these fires in conjunction with firefighters on the ground with helicopters. But if you, not, if you didn't know, now you know, about 25% of the deaths from wildfires are coming from helicopter crashes. And so the less people we have to put in helicopters, then obviously the more lives we're saving. And helicopters only operate during the day. Uh, drones can operate at any time, assuming you got your night waiver. What's happening now is that they're starting to use drones to actually like light these fires instead of helicopters to make it more convenient so that more people have to, don't have to put their lives at risk. Obviously, you know, to be able to take away this fuel for the fire, as well as make it so they can do it 24 hours a day instead of just during daylight. So for me, this is drones is doing good, helping fight fires, and we out here winning. All right, and last but not least, one of the greatest obstacles of flying a drone for a lot of drone pilots is power lines. The biggest reason for power lines is obviously we're supposed to have a visual observer when we're flying, but sometimes when you're learning you might not have that or you're just flying as a hobbyist, you might not have a VO. So you're flying, you know, trying to look down, trying to look up, trying to look down at your screen of what you're filming, also looking up at the drone. And power lines are some of the hardest things to see in your camera lens. And that makes them terrifying because it's just a little thread pretty much of what you, can, you can't see. And if you happen to run into it, the drone is over, it's done. And so the US Army actually is doing a, uh, a, a, giving the ability for drones to be able to detect the power lines because of the magnetic field that comes from them. If you don't know, electricity creates its own magnetic field, so that means power lines automatically, any area that is around them, automatically there is a magnetic field that is detectable, that comes from them. And obviously if a drone can detect that, it'll be a unique signature, then maybe it'll be able to alert you and say, hey, you're probably close to a power line area, which would, for me at least, be, feel really good. Now you'll ask the question, well, will be, like what, what? What about the uh, like? What about the object avoidance sensors and all that? Like, yes, they do work wonderfully when the, the area is well lit. They work wonderfully when the area, like when the power line is thick or like not against. Like, there's not a contrast between the power line and the background. So, like, if it's a blue sky and a black power line, I'll probably see it. But you know, if it's dark clouds above or, like I said, low light uh, times, then the drone's object avoidance might not see it because it's so little. So this could be a big deal, especially for flying at night, for flying at times when you know the power lines are just thinner and harder to. Uh, to visually see with other sensors. And I think this could be a really big advancement for autonomous drone flight over everything. Simply because we're gonna start having drones delivering packages, medication, and things like that all over the country. I think it's really important that we figure out a way to avoid the common obstacles, and the most common of them all will be power lines. All right, Joners, thank you guys so much for checking out this fun version of Droner News. We got a bunch more of them. I want to shout out to RemotePilot101.com for allowing us to be here today. And as always, I need you guys to subscribe, like, do all the stuff to show that you support us and make sure you stay fly.